Amber Sheffers. Yeah. Roberta Corkinitz is absent this evening. Brian Vidinsky. Here. Morgan McLaughlin. Here. Richard O'Neill is absent this evening. Ed Alla. Here. John Flores is absent this evening. And Eric Alvarez. Here. Well, so I please move, uh, move that the absences of Rich, Roberta, and John be reported as excused. What, is, what difference does it make? Because um, under the Sunshine Law, if you miss three consecutive meetings for six of the calendar year, you can be removed for cause. Got it. We have a good board, you don't want to move. Good, good. Uh, just, I wonder. Mm -hmm. I'm about. Yeah. What? I moved it. Okay, move second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item, let's give a reason to the signal of democracy and freedom. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have four. Are there any um, conflicts? Okay, next time it's not on the agenda, but the approval or the appointment of Tony's replacement. Her name is Ms. McCoy, and just me, uh, well, it involves money, so it's going to be a roll call vote. That's enough for all the cats. Well, she used to play, yeah. she used to play volleyball. <laughs> I reviewed the resolution, and it is legally sufficient as the form of content and execution, so we can adopt it. Okay, so I'd like to move it. Second. 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 Roll call, please. Audit there. Yes. Cameron Shepherds. Yes. Brian Vadinsky. Yes. Morgan McLaughlin. Yes. Ed Alla. Yes. Eric Alvarez. Yes. Okay. Um, next time we have no no minutes nor uh, um, resolutions, so we can go right into land use. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Silver. I'm from the uh, law firm Di Francesco Bateman in Warren Township, New Jersey. And I'm here on behalf of Joe Vicario, General Contractors LLC. Very good, welcome. Thank you for having me. So, who's the owner, though? Is he the owner? Joe so, Vicario? So, uh, Kingsman Company is the owner, in which uh, Mr. Vicario is the uh, majority. He, he, uh, Jardy, I think he's the sole member. So, yeah, sole member. Yeah. So, uh, good evening, board members, board professionals, members of the public. I have the privilege of representing the applicant this evening, Joe Picario, General Contractors LLC. This application is for preliminary and final major site plan approval together with the DNC variance relief for the renovation of an existing building, which is located at Block 114, Lot 1, more commonly known as 85 West High Street. Building as it exists in its current state is, is in need of improvement. It's tired, and the applicant proposes a complete overall of the exterior of the building. The proposal is to keep the existing office space located on the first floor as office space. The renovations include a second floor addition over the existing first floor space, uh, an expansion of the third floor, and the construction of four total apartment units. Two apartment units to be located on the second floor and two apartment units to be located on the third floor. The applicant's property is located in the POR Professional Office Residential District, in which the use of multiple residential units on upper floors is not permitted. Therefore, the applicant is requesting a use variance uh, to permit multiple residential units instead of just a single residential unit on the upper floors. The applicant also seeks D4 variance relief to permit an increase from the maximum permitted FAR. There are also a number of bulk variances and design waivers requested as part of this application, many of which are pre-existing non-conformities. Um, it should be noted that the, the location of this property is in a transition area between the downtown Somerville area, and it, it literally borders the uh, POR district and the downtown Somerville zone. Um, the applicant takes tremendous pride in this project and has worked very closely with his professionals to come up with a beautiful building design that, that you'll see before you this evening. Uh, the applicant went through great lengths to ensure that the proposed apartment sizes comply with the requirements stated in, in the borough's redevelopment plan, even though the subject property is not located in the redevelopment area. This building is truly near and dear to the applicant's heart as the building, once renovated, will become the applicant's new corporate headquarters. As many of you are aware, or maybe some of you are not, the applicant uh, 
is a home remodeling firm and, and a bulk of its business and customer base is located in the Somerville area. So this building will really ultimately serve as a representation of the applicant's business and attention to detail. It's something that the applicant wants to be proud of, wants to be able to show off to the community, to his customer base. And the applicant has been a key player in, in helping to revitalize certain areas of the borough and sincerely believes that this project will fit right into the borough's PR zone. Presentation of the application will be made for three professionals this evening. Mr. Craig Stiers, uh, engineer, Mr. Jo Joseph Cuniano, licensed architect, Mr. James Kyle, professional planner, who will address the proposed annual leave associated with this application. Mr. Dominic Cario, as we mentioned earlier, uh, representative of the applicant and the owner of the property, is also in attendance this evening. And Mr. Mr. Picari has made himself available to address any questions from the board, if the board should have any. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I would ask if I can introduce Mr. Styers, have Mr. Styers sworn, and allow Mr. Styers a few moments to place on the record his educational professional background. Before that, we only have six members, and you're going to need use variance, um, and you need five affirmative. Do you want to proceed with six? Um, so, if it's if it's all right, I would I would like to proceed if if we would like the opportunity potentially to take some of the feedback from the board members, and if it's necessary, um, we'd like to be able to. Uh, we think we have a, a plan that we'd like to forge ahead with, but if it's necessary, we'd like to to potentially make changes if it's necessary. But we do feel comfortable proceeding uh, with six members this evening. Now, if we if we go through next month, if we we can't resolve it tonight. Would you be amenable to them reviewing a YouTube video? Yes, absolutely. Because we, our Bill TV is not maintaining the, or uh, filming new new meetings now. Yes. We used to be able to do that. They would sign a certification that they, they reviewed the, the uh, YouTube video. Mr. Chairman, so, that'd be perfectly acceptable to us. Thank you. Mr. Stars, would you raise your right hand? You solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, so if you got Yes, I do. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Craig Styers, S-T-I-R-E-S. Thank you very much. Counselor, you're with us, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So, Mr. Styers, did you prepare supervise the preparation of the site plan for the board this evening? Yes. You want to give Mr. Styers credentials? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> He knows I'm after him. <laughs> He's still here, and it's hard as the other being. <laughs> no, we'll stipulate to his, his but I'm going to do a TV interview with you. Right. And the reason I did that was years ago when I first came on board, we had a gentleman in Mr. Steyer's position. His professional license was in the, uh, in the teens, and he studied with Frank Lloyd Wright. And we... I don't want to hear the application. I want to hear about you. <laughs> Mr. Styers has done so much in this, in this community. We have to preserve that. Appreciate it. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Styers, can you share with the board what the applicant is proposing to do by this application this evening? Uh, sure. Um, the as uh, Mike said, that the uh, site's located at 85 West uh, West High Street, uh, Lot 114, Lot 1. Is that the this would be the southeast corner of West High and Davenport. Uh, used to be the uh, Somerset Oral Surgery uh, office. Which I've been there. I'm glad it's not there, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, honestly, it's been vacant for a number of years. Uh, it's a great building. If, for those of you who have been around for a while, it used to be the Immaculate Conception Directory. Back in the conception church actually turned down next to it, which was in the parking lot, and the rectory is the, the remaining building. So, um, but anyway, so it's a three story brick building. It sits on 15,200 square feet, and like I said it used to be the Somerset Oral Surgery Center or group. Mm -hmm. Contained, I mean, it, there's no parking spots left or striping, but it probably contained about 22 parking spots. Um, Roughly speaking, if you if you lay out the striping, will these parking be solely for his tenants? Well, this I'm going through the existing first, okay. so uh, I'll I'll jump to the proposed okay. and go through that. Um, the perimeter of the uh, property is fairly well landscaped. Um, yeah, it, it obviously needs some supplement, but uh, you know the 
the key thing is that the, the power lines now come on that side. Before the Davenport, they used to be on the other side. So um, between Davenport and High Street, you can't get really the high, higher uh, street trees, but the trees that are there are appropriately sized. And so we can intend to keep them uh, going forward. Uh, just south of the property is the Borough Alley going into the Watt One, um, uh, just behind the United Reform Church. There are two uh, PSEMG lights on that alley. The first light is the Wesley light, out, as I would call it, is uh, it's an LED light, but not as bright as the next one over. So the Eastley light is closer to the bright lights that we have in our parking lot. Put it softly. There's no, there's no trespass, right? right? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and we'll get to that later on when we talk about the lighting. Um, when I get to the proposed conditions, but uh, right now there is lighting on the back that does propagate onto the property. Um, so I'll, again, I'll talk about that when we get to the proposed conditions. Um, as far as the existing, again, the minimum front yard is 25 feet and it's uh, current building is 5.77 feet from high street the minimum side yard um, the existing is 1.94 on the easterly side of the property the rear yard is 25 feet and it's 64.6 from the back alley the existing far or required is 25 we're at 25.87 the existing coverage or the coverage Maximum coverage is 50%. We're at 74.3 now. Uh, number of stories is limited to two and a half, but it's three stories. Maximum height is 35 feet, and the existing building is 36.8. So, moving on to the proposed conditions, um, as Mike said, it's Delta Carrier General Contractors is looking to move their uh, corporate office to the facility. Um, Dominic is third generation, third. Yeah. third generation in the company. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen his house going up on uh, Cliff Street. Um, like they said, attention to detail. I've, I've only been by it and I've heard about the inside. But that's that's his house. Yes, you live there. Right here. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, I appreciate it. So he's not only look once to his business, but he's living in town. So he's got a. There's no doubt he's got a vested interest. Um, on top of that, my niece lost, got flooded out, and she's up just off a of high street. He's going to be doing that over as well. So again, it, it's just kind of a he's come in and he's doing a lot of good things, like uh, Mike said. So, and then as part of the building renovation, he's looking to renovate and add to the second second and third floor like mike said two apartments on each um, each floor would have a one bedroom and a two bedroom um, the one bedrooms will be 810 and 839 square feet two bedrooms 1028 and 1082 so they're kind of stacked on top of each other second and third floor obviously renovating the outside which would include ada access to the building reconfiguring the parking lot and part now will it goes from 22 spots we're actually reducing it's required to have 16 spots we, we're putting in 18 and yet the coverage is still going down so we're going from 76.3 down to 68.7 as far as the coverage the reason i'd ask that was with the um, construction of the waste property on davenport street i know that they were eyeing that piece of property for their uh, some of their equipment. Yeah. And I just want to know if that was full and I not, don't believe so. Yeah. So, yeah, this one's all on its own. So, it would be for his employees and, as well as the residents upstairs. Um, <clears throat> so, the parking does comply with both the ordinance and the RSIS. Uh, he's also going to be repaving the parking lot. Uh, he'll be repairing the damaged curbing. Uh, installing a new dumpster in the back of the property, and as I said, reducing the coverage. Still doing this, and still reducing the coverage by almost six percent. Um, additionally, we'll be installing additional landscaping in the landscape areas, in a 
adjacent to the building, as well as on the perimeter down Davenport Street and some, some in front of the building. There's an existing fence that was put up by the borough along the alley, so it's really too narrow to do anything, but the fence serves as the buffer. Um, <clears throat> right now, I have new lighting proposed. Uh, I kind of designed it to stand in on its own. But if you look at Mike's comments, and I, and I agree that, you know, I would work with Mike to kind of, I don't think we need a separate light in the back. We can, you know, with the thermal lighting being uh, onto the property, I don't think we need a third light to, you know, add on to. I think we could work with the lighting that's uh, that's currently out there. Yeah, since the lights are public, the areas are always going to be on or maintained. So they're not private lights. So why spend the money putting lights in that are 10 feet apart? You just don't need. Right. You know, spend the money elsewhere. This is not. This is yeah. So going through the coverage or the uh, zoning again, uh, the middle of the front yard. So we will, we are exacerbating the front yard, I guess. Just, I guess we're going to take. Yeah. And it's, Going from five point uh, five point seven down to two point seven, and that's to the uh, the balconies up above. So technically, the the foundation staying the same. It's just the balconies above will stick out a little bit more. Side yard would stay the same at one point nine four. The rear yard would be reduced from sixty four point six to fifty four point five. The FAR would go up to forty one point one three. Coverage would drop down to 68.7. Uh, we still have three stories, and then the maximum height would be 38.2 feet. So that's kind of an outline of uh, what we what we're looking to do as far as the projects, uh, site plan wise, I guess you could say. And the uh, balconies in the front were added to the original design. They had Juliet's, just a, a fence, just a decorative thing because I had a comment in the original report that they're not really functional. Uh, so that's why they, I guess that's why they revised it. Yep. They have a they're three foot deep, so you can actually use the balconies. Right. But that further encroaches is what Craig is saying because of that. Good for the Yeah, right, bike race. Not quite as good as ours, but. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, if there's any questions, I can answer them. If not, we can um, kind of go through uh, Mike's letter that's appropriate this time, at least with that one part of it. Greg, you want to start on page seven? Sure. Uh, A1. Uh, basically saying the parking does comply. Um, the parking lot will be repaved. So that that's is eight too, right? Two. Yep. Um, a three. Craig, just so you know, there's a policy that all individual lots we try to get anchored together so they're more efficient where, where possible. So there's a parking lot to the west. There's a great change. It's yeah. not flush. There's a couple of feet there. So the, you always see a follow-up a question for me. Can you combine it to make the parking lot more efficient? Parking lot to the east. Yes, I'm sorry, not to the west of the east. Right. Right. It. right. So I think Craig, in correspondence, you had said that it's not really feasible to connect that because of the dumpster location and the grade change. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and, and I think you know you, you're just the potentially you're putting 18 cars onto the, the lot next door, and I'm sure they're not going to want anything like that. And right, your driveway on that lot is also probably 12 foot wide, so it's one way. So I don't think it'd be really conducive to drive. You're saying you have adequate parking, there's no reason to maximize it or to connect it because you're not efficient parking. Yeah. That's another reason not to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Mr. Sachs, comment four talks about the uh, Verizon utility cabinet and whether or not we can grant an easement if that's not exist already. We can do that, correct? Uh, I mean, we can attempt to. It's Verizon sometime a little tough to get, get a hold of, but I mean, right now it's there, but like I said, we can make the attempt. If you move it, you get a hold of it. What's that? If you move it, you get a hold of it. 
<laughs> kind of like they pull them too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <coughs> Paul's report comment five spoke about the uh, concrete curb, and you addressed that, touched a little bit on that in your testimony. Um, what type of consideration many have been given to replace the concrete curb? Um, the applicant with the changes and the the amount of I guess money he's putting into the refurbishment of the building is trying to save as much as he can. So he is, you know, the damage curve, the drop curve in the back, he's obviously gonna fix that. He's gonna repay the parking lot. But anything cost-wise we can save, um, we're looking to do. So if, you know, there, there's curb that's functional there, um, we would like to leave it if possible. And then uh, instead of redoing everything on the site. So. How bad is it, Mike? It's old. It, it's, it's really an aesthetic comment. It's a brand new parking lot. They're going to replace the bad pieces. The parking, the curbing there has got to be, Craig, 40, 50 years. It's old. So yeah. the, the issue is you never match it right, and he's out there ripping it all out. I, I understand the concern. I got it. Uh, I'm just taking the big bird's eye saying it's it's replacing 90% of and leaving 160 feet of old curb there. Uh, can you match it up color wise? Maybe, maybe power wash it. I don't know. Usually the aging of concrete is impossible to match up color wise. We can make the new look dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really an aesthetic question. Better. Back to the comment, it's not really a function. If it functions, it functions. And that's where it really is. I mean, in reality, we like to put granite with lock in, but that's a board. I mean, the, he's got, you, you can't put two thirds, in my opinion, granite block and leave the concrete. That looks bad. So if he's going to leave the curb, he's kind of forced to replace it with curb. Whereas if he's going to replace it all, you can put granite block everywhere, which in my opinion is a nicer look, but it's a money thing. Well, I'm, Craig, you might want to comment on this. My experience has been that now granite block is cheaper to install than curb, concrete curb. It's just unbelievably, if you get prices, it's reversed the last 15 years. Really? Yeah, no one, one, the granite block, you, you can replace it easily. You, you break one, a concrete, you have to go joint to joint. So if you're doing a big site, it's so easy to fix the granite block as opposed to ripping out a whole section to damage it. So I, I like to see it, but this is really, look, I like to see the granite block done to make it all fresh, but I, I, I'm fully aware that there's a financial impact of these things. Okay. Um, so comment six, Mr. Colts, all right, I think Mr. Premiano would, Mr. Premiano would be better equipped to address that comment. Um, okay. Uh, I think Mr. Snyder's touched upon this, but um, the uh, driveway apron, will that remain or be replaced, Mr. Snyder? Uh, at this point, it would intend to remain. And I think it's in decent condition. It so, is. Yeah. It is. Common 8, we can, we can comply with Common 8 and uh, make sure the condensers are, are uh, in accordance with the uh, noise control of the property line. Um, so comment nine, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they can, on the, I'm a little concerned that you have the five compressors in a very tight space, that it might echo, and you have a bedroom right above it. The second floor master bedroom is right above these compressors. So I don't know if you can put some sound attenuation in the ceiling, or is this going to, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there on whether, the, the concern is the unlikely that you have four or five compressors running at the same time. I didn't have more question for the, for yes. the architect. Then. Yeah. Well, you do have room if, if the board doesn't think that we should put the, the compressors in that alcove. There is room to the south um, of the building to put how many compressors you're going to need? Condensers? Four or five? Five. That's five. Five, yeah. There is room there to put five compressors on the south elevation or the south lawn, let's call it. I don't know. Why why would you put them in an alcove like that? Well, you didn't. I didn't. Okay. I'll, I'll say I'll save it for the architect. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this. Can they be put in that location that I just suggested? I mean they're only probably three by three, so probably yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So um common yeah. nine common nine speaks to uh dumpster enclosure and trash removal. Uh It'll be, it'll be owned by a private hauler, hauler correct? 
and uh, we can comply with the with the requirements set forth at the bottom of comment nine right. regarding the restrictions. Um, so the, the recycling is going to be picked up by private, not by the county. I would probably expect so. I mean, you could probably do both. To be honest with you, I mean, the problem, Craig. The problem with saying the county, then you're going to have to get a letter from the county approving it. No, and they they, they picked up along High Street. So, I mean, theoretically, yeah, but, you could put the cans up. I, I understand, but you'd have to get approval from the county to do that. So if you say the county's picking it up, then I'm going to say I need county approval on that. And if the county disagrees with the pickup plan, we're, we lose time. So I'm just saying, the county has this like dumpster closure requirement for their, their trucks. If you don't comply, no, they I'm say saying no. they wouldn't come and pick up out of the dumpster. You're saying they'll pick up from the street, and I'm yeah. saying I don't know if they'll do that on a apartment building. Okay, I'm saying I hear so what I you're saying. So I would say, as far as this, you know, unless it's other way, you know, unless they can just bring it out, I would say we have a private hauler for both. Right. right. I'm just saying if you, I, I'm hoping you show flexibility in the testimony because I don't want to be stuck in the compliance oh, no. and losing three months over this issue with the county. Sure. That's so, what I'm trying yeah. to avoid. So, uh, so we'll should have, the board approve this? Yeah. Should the board approve it? We'll have a private hauler. However, if the county sends an approval letter, if they if it worked out later with the county, so be it. Right. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Right. Um, comment ten, I think, probably would be best addressed by Mr. Pignano. Uh, as it has to do with the uh, enclosure finish. And uh, comment 11 goes to uh, sidewalks. Um, Again, I, I, I looked at that. I mean, there is a little, there's maybe a half inch along the curb. Um, if you reset that sidewalk, you're taking them all up. I, 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 and that, that's a significant cost for. Right, I'm not saying take them all off. I'm just saying get rid of that tripping hazard. The problem here is this, this the pavers were put in in 1990 or 89, and they were put on stone dust. So over the last 33 years, you have settlement. So what's common in downtown is you have that tripping hazard between the paver well, and the actually, sidewalk that, curb. That section is concrete. The curb is. No, so the sidewalk. I thought this. I thought there were some pavers in there. No, it's all sidewalk. That's what I'm saying. If you if you got to lift the sidewalk, you got to take it all out and start over. It's not or jacket. It's not paver, right? Okay. So you're talking a significant cost to pick up a. Yeah, quarter to three, three eighths of an inch, and I, I don't think it's that much of a tripping hazard. Right, um, people are going from. I understand what you're saying. I mean, not. Uh, you can see the last time I was in the site about four yeah. months ago. I'm like, it's papers. I'm like, yeah. they're saying it's not sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, but just walk down that street, and there's more tripping hazards than you could count. Mm -hmm. So right, okay. Well, you do it. It's in, it's in good shape. It's just the it's still the lip on the curb. It's still lip. Yeah. 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 So uh, moving to part B, uh, we touched on site lighting and it seems as though that, that Mr. Sire, the applicant, the work of Mr. Cole, um, there, there was supposed to be common three, whether the lights would be wide so that they're dimmable. Is that something? I would say the ones that we put in, that they could be dimmable. I mean, they're only bright, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically one through six, we would work with Mike to get that result. Right. right. You should and I had a comment somewhere about security lighting. I don't know if it's you're gonna if the security lighting is gonna be the public lights. Maybe that is the security lighting. Right? I mean so, like I said, the one on the east side is okay. pretty secure. Let's just <laughs> Okay. I was thinking about putting the basketball going in my, my right. office. <laughs> um all right, moving to landscaping. Um so we dress the, the utility cabinet. Um, and we make a good faith effort to have an easement uh, <coughs> to Verizon. Uh, looking at to comment number two, um, if you, Mr. Cole, you had referenced uh, two parking spaces that weren't shielded or screened, and whether the shrubs could be extended to ensure those spaces were screened. I would say we're getting into the site easement at that point. Right. And and Craig, quickly did it. <coughs> you go 15 foot back, and I'm just saying, if you want to show it, Craig, obviously. Yeah, I can hand it to the plan. If it's in the site, yeah, at the bottom <clears throat> two spaces southern near the driveway parking lot driveway entrance and exit there's a, obviously a site easement if you pull up and if you look to your right you have to be able to see 
if the landscape is in the way of your eyesight, it's no, no good, which is over 30 inches. Right. So I got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, how many street trees are we uh, proposing? Uh, I don't think we're not proposing any because they're the existing. The existing. And, right. And I think there's, if you count the one on the corner. Well, that's, that's the thing that the evergreen doesn't count. And the so one, there's an evergreen. Deck, right. Next to the evergreen is a tree that's a shade tree. It's on the island, mm -hmm. not on the side. Okay. I, I count that as a shade tree. So you have four street trees and you need five because the evergreen doesn't count. The evergreen's there. I'm not saying it's not there. I was I wasn't thinking the evergreen. I was thinking the other one. Well, the other one is in on the dog island. So I'm, I'm giving you credit for the safe for the shade trees okay. that you comply with with the shade requirement, which is one for every five. Okay. So so we're deficient one, one street one tree. tree. Yeah. Right. And there's the opportunity to either make financial contribution mm -hmm. or um, as Mr. Cole pointed out, that there's utility lines located. Um, uh, the side down from West High Street. So, if, if we can provide a tree, I mean, realistically, it'd probably be the, the financial. Okay. Because I mean, you're again with the wires. I understand it's you know you end up killing the tree because it's too close to the next one. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, poisonous shrub will be uh, <laughs> removed and exchanged. Yeah. Can we uh, uh, set? <laughs> I know. <laughs> did you specify poisonous shrub? Was that someone else? No, I did. not You did a nice proud of it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I have to. I actually have to watch this because every so I think he does this on purpose to see if I'm reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> Poison ivy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem with the ivy is that yeah, the ivy. Yeah. Right. So it's fine. Yep. Move the storm water. Um. I think three. Comment three was the only one that I saw that, that needed to be addressed tonight. Whether the um, whether you're confident that the storm water runoff from the second night adversely impact the surrounding streets or properties. What page? Well, are you, what page are you on? Twelve. Twelve. I would go back to two. I, I prefer not to do the roof layers if possible. I mean, you know how I feel about that. And I just don't have a state feeling about it. Okay, but it's not a state, it's not a major development. The problem here is the, uh, the potential icing. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem if we didn't have freezing in the winter. How does the state feel about it? They'd rather see it run on the grass. And he wants infiltration, green avenues. You shouldn't pipe it to it. Where the hell is the grass? There's no grass. What I'm saying is, <laughs> you're redoing the whole building, you're doing the parking lot, you can certainly tie the roof leaders into the on site catch basin so there's no potential icing in the parking lot. That's, and Craig's going to give me a little poke and fighting me on this saying, you're not, the intent is not what the state wants, is what he's saying. And I'm saying it's a 90, 80% paved lot and it's silty soil. We're not going to infiltrate anything in some way, usually. So just tie it in. Tie it in. All right. Yeah. Yeah, as far as three is concerned, yeah, that, I mean, we're actually reducing the coverage, so there's going to be less runoff coming from the site. So, so, especially now that we're piping it. So you're not you're not adversely impacting no. the surrounding community, surrounding the neighborhood. The streets or the joining house to the east, and you're good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, yeah, cool. that, now we're piping it. Yes, that's right. even better. All right. Just for um, discussion, if the state wants you to take sheet water, sheet flow. And water along with it, they wouldn't add. Then we wouldn't have any curbs anymore, right? That's what we're getting to. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it's good. I'm just, no, 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 that's what we got to do. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Um, all the sanitary things are okay. I mean, we're we're under the two thousand gallons. Um, as far as the uh, the laterals, for what I can tell from the uh, part all maps, it's a four inch. Yeah. So, um, just to comment through the video to see if it's in good shape, if it's in bad shape, just repair it. We've done us on a few projects, Greg. Right? The idea is we just try to eliminate the infiltration inflow, inflow into the sanitary sewer system. So, so I was going to uh, move to the general comments, which was on 18. Yeah. Um, So one of the questions that uh, we should address is whether uh, you're aware of any contamination on the site. Or no, I, mean, I checked the geo web. There's nothing, no indicators. So I, you know, as far as the information I have, no. Okay. 
Uh, I think yeah, I think it was an oil tank, oil building, but the tank is in the basement, so that's going to be removed and converted to gas. Yeah. Um, Add the transformer required. Uh, <clears throat> we really don't know until we start dealing with PSC and J. Uh, I highly doubt it, but yeah, I doubt it too. But just so the board would grant us some flexibility, if there's a an admin transformer that we're going to have to show at the site. Yeah. Right. Well, where would it go? It would probably go into the compressors. You talked about that. Um, how are we getting? How are we getting over there? I mean, where's the? Where is the uh, power coming into the building? I'm assuming it's coming off the deck, of course, correct? Right? Or because it's a short high compared to the wires. All right. So if the transformer is mounted on the pole, that's no problem. But if they want a pad transformer, that's going to have to go in the front yard, correct? Not going to go in the back. Yeah, then you get there. Well, is there, I mean, if anything would go on that, that island next to the driveway, I would think. Okay. Yeah. They're usually, what, maybe three by three, something like that? Yeah. Correct. That's as it's needed. So I, I, it's the worst case. What happens is sometimes we don't account for it, and there's no room on site for the transformer, and it becomes a major problem. Uh, and sometimes it's trip back to the board because they can't get the transformer on the property. So the comments there are just, I'm just hoping the board gives some flexibility if this would happen. Right? That's what I'm looking at. Um, turning to uh, comment five, I think it was addressed. Uh, before the hearing this evening about the electric vehicle um, make ready spaces requirement. And uh, it's our understanding uh, that because A, it's a pre existing lot, and also because it's less than five dwellings, that it does not be, the product does not need to provide uh, electric vehicle parking or make ready spaces. Yeah, Craig, there's nothing in the ordinance, the state ordinance, that says that the pre existing lots. Are exempted. I just couldn't find it. And then Craig emailed me a correspondence from DCA. Was it DCA? Yep. That said they confirmed that existing parking lots are exempt. So that I couldn't find it. And Craig provided that. That's all I have for uh, general comments. So, uh, any any questions from the board? Regarding Mr. Steyer's testimony. Anybody from the board have any questions? Desires. Anybody from the public have any questions on the testimony just given? Thank you. We'll set that date for that interview sometime next year. Okay. Yeah, so all your witnesses are going to remain for the duration of the hearing, correct? Correct. Okay. So just want to move by here. So raise your right hand. You saw we switched the testimony you're about to give in this matter. We'll do the truth, so I hope you got it. I did. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Joseph Permiano, P R I N I A N O. Very good. Uh, counsel, your witness, just a quick are these uh, are these exhibits that were yes. filed? Or yes. Correct? Yes, yes. correct. Yes. Okay. If there's anything new, just let us know and put the marker there. Yeah. Just leave your yeah. credentials and background. Graduated New Jersey Institute of Technology in 2001. Uh, obtained my license in New Jersey in 2007. Uh, currently operate my own practice in New Jersey. I'm licensed in several other states. I have testified before numerous boards throughout New Jersey. Uh, this is the first time before this board. Any local? Any other local boards? Um, yeah, yeah, different ones in Middlesex County, Mercer County, um, Good thing, well, Essex County, all just, just different townships. Okay. So, uh, 
quite a bit. So uh, just not in this county. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Davis is in the county chairman. Uh, I'm actually not 100% sure if that was submitted, so if we can mark it as A1, just as a precaution. Uh, sure, that would be fine. Uh, are we, I just want to make sure we make sure we talked earlier today about the existing stuff that's submitted or the original A1, 2, and 3, and the stuff oh, that's yeah. new. <coughs> usually it starts in 8, 5, for example. Okay, that's whatever you want to mark it as is, is acceptable. Okay. Uh, Mr. Davis, 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 Mr.
the more, siding. Um, uh, yeah, so, how are the joints? I'm not familiar with this. Sorry. So, so a lot of the fiber cement siding uh, comes in uh, different size panels. Now. Um, there's different ways to install that. Um, you're seeing a, a lot of uh, uh, newer buildings are doing a board and batten look, which is uh, where you have like a one by three strip um, over, it used to be over, it was to hide the seams of, of the wood joints. Um, now what you're seeing is that board and batten is coming back in look, um, but it's, the, the panels are much wider. The panels are using uh, four, four, but, four foot by eight foot sheet. And the batten strips are really to hide the nails now at this point, not really to hide seams. In this particular case, um, we take those sheets of, uh, James Hardy is one uh, manufacturer. There are plenty of other ones. But we take that fiber cement panel, um, we cut it into different uh, exposures, uh, and then it, it's installed horizontally like we show it. That gap, sometimes they refer to it as a nickel gap, um, and it's just, a, it's just a clean horizontal gap between the panels. What? All right, I got you. Is it a shiplap? You can get certain panels in a shiplap. Um, I'm not sure what this one is going to be. Probably not. Um, the shiplap, it, it, a lot of these panels come almost like a sheet of plywood. Uh, so it's, it's square on all edges and there's no, there's no shiplap to it. All right, the joint, what I'm, I'm getting at is the joint between the panels, either vertically or horizontally. How wide is that? Is that a, is that a protruded joint? Is that a batten or is that a reveal? No, it's it's a it's a gap in the material. That it's it's the thickness of a nickel, which is kind of where the term the nickel gap comes from. So it's just a spacing that would be between those panels. Right, well, what's um, on the back side of that? What's to keep the water from running uh, in that groove? Everything has to be flashed. Absolutely. Right, so there's a piece of flashing, a piece of L flashing that goes over the. Yeah, that, that is correct. One. Okay. That is correct. Yes. Right. And, and just for the record, uh, we can mark these stone sample as A8. Okay. Can we get that L flash in the same color as the panel? Uh, typically, the flashing is either matching in color or like a clear aluminum, like a galvanized kind of color. Um, it's it, you would want one of those colors because otherwise it would it would look strange. Um, although that. You know, they put a little hem on that Z flashing. Right. Uh, it, it is minimal, but it's if you went up to it and, and physically, you know, if you were close to the building, you could see it. But more than a few feet away, you could, it would blend in, especially it's with the color. Not going to be no finish or white or red or lime green. <laughs> I right. I love lime green. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no lime green. Not on this. One. Maybe on my building. <laughs> Yeah, why the green paper? Uh, just to be you know, you know I, I didn't get to study with Frank Lloyd Wright. I wasn't born yet, but you know, it's my take on a little, just doing stuff a little different. That's all. I like it. I can find this, this drawings in the in the audience. And we know if you're paying attention, because if you're not looking at green, then I know you're not. Um, but I, I know there were some comments about some of the some of the exterior elements um, of uh, you know gutters, leaders, all of that. Uh, certainly, that would be all matching colors. The intent is is to have everything. You know, if we you can see in the rendering, we tried to do something that looks very nice. That would be our intent with all the accessories um, and, and other items that are put on the building. Um, a lot of buildings that we've done and designed. Uh, we even go as far as you know some of the, the louvers and different things that were were uh, requested to be put on the drawings. You know you, you can also get those in matching colors. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know the, the black black accessories were very difficult to come across, um, but they're they're becoming more common now. There is a, a trend going towards that direction. Um, so some of that stuff is easier to find without having to paint some of those items. Um, but of course, we would match all of that. Uh, same with the leaders. Um, you are coming down from a light gray to a darker gray on the stone. Are you going to pick a color or are you going to match the color? When the transition is made from the from the hardy plank to the stone, are you going to also transition the color of the leaders? Usually it would stay the color of the side. Okay. So 
So I would I would use that as a, again it would be a complementing color, but it wouldn't be the gray. It, typically the gutters would be the same color as the siding. They kind of accent that. That's all. And the casement windows are made by. Uh, they are casement windows, right? Yeah. Typically, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we we actually have there's some double hungs, I believe, as well. Um, the the we usually don't get into specifying the manufacturer at this point, um, just because there's there's a lot of different options. We also have to make sure that depending on the areas and, and square footages of glass and everything, that we comply with the U factors and solar heat gains. Um, so we want to make sure that you know we're going to be using a, a quality window. Um, typically, you see a lot of Anderson, Marvin, and Pella. Those are a lot of the brands that we recommend. Um, you know, but certainly uh, because of the black color in nature, that does limit it a little bit. Um, a lot of the cheap vinyl windows are usually just white. Um, so to, to, to try to do some different colors like we're proposing on this building, we usually have to go to a higher end window to, to achieve that. So it's going to be a vinyl clad windows. Yeah. That's what it's going to be? Yes. Yes. It's usually nothing is, um, nothing is wood directly right. anymore. Um, and I don't know if this really warrants, you know, a, a, an aluminum storefront kind of look. So it would usually be a vinyl flat. Uh, Anderson is, is a, is a fiber X material, which is like a, a modified composite, but, but similar. Yeah. The reasons why I had all these questions is should the board grant the use bearings or you're locked into the building. I understand you say this is not in the building stage, but you, we've had issues with this. Whereas this exhibit, when you come for compliance, the building would substantially be different. And then that's not what the board saw or inspected. Oh, right? Of course, so, I understand. I, now, what we're showing is, 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 is accurate. Um, right. You know, we had a lot of discussions on colors and schemes and materials. Um, there was a lot of renditions that we went back and forth. Um, and, and the client, uh, you know, the nature of his trade, he is familiar with a lot of his materials and colors and selections. Uh, so there was a lot of thought put into that. So he's very, I, I'm very confident, the client's very confident that this is the look we are going for. So, so just for clarification, so this is the look that we're going for, and we'll do our best to make it substantially similar in the compliance process to what you're seeing, but there's obviously unknowns involved. Um, there could be situations where a material can't be um, purchased or but if there's a price hike of certain materials. So it's fair, Mr. Primiano, that we'll do our best to, to make the building look like what we're seeing here. Absolutely. It'll, it'll be substantially similar. However, there might be some reasonable uh, changes required. Uh, no, I understand. I'm just saying that pointing out that it's not a concept plan is what I'm getting at. But this, this is not a concept. Plan. Should the board grant this? This is important. In my this, opinion, some of the granting will be the aesthetics, I'm assuming. So the aesthetics of the of product being proposed is very much in question, is part of the deliberation. Correct. This is not a concept plan. I just don't want to, I just want the applicant to be in a situation where should a change be necessary outside of the applicant's control or due to, right. to hiking prices that they would have to 100% build the token you see here, it has to be a, a slight level of, of wiggle room just to just for unknown circumstances, but this is the applicant's no, you, can't, you can't go there. No. You can't make that supposition. That's the building that we're going to be voting on. But so why I, don't you just leave it at that? I, I agree. If I something was, happens, if a meteor hits the building halfway through and you can't replace the windows, then you come back in front of the board and go to Mike. Council Brady, the keyword is substantially similar. So the applicant stipulates to making the building appear substantially similar to the building. I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> Please. It's, it's just legally similar. It's basically. So no, by indicating he's stipulating to them, they're saying that they covenant or they assure us that the building will be built as close as possible yes. to the plans that are submitted. That's correct. Uh, when they stipulate, they're basically saying, we agree, uh, we'll do it. You're yeah. okay with that? Yep. I'm, right. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I've seen situations where it's like, it has to be. I don't need to get into that, but I think we're on the same page here. No, I uh, we're not going to hold you to the same three people standing there. Well, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. The fact that you stipulated is a record, so yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Okay. Um, I know there were some comments about the uh, the basement. Uh, currently, there's 
the, the basement access is, is internal. It's access through the office space. Um, there is a there is a door at the top of that stairwell uh, that would provide access down to the basement. In the basement is all the meters. Um, we need to show that on the existing plan. There's a uh, you know water meter. Um, I think we're going to be adding a gas meter. There's uh, several electrical panels that are down there. Uh, there's an oil tank that will most likely be coming out as the units get changed to high efficiency, the, the heating units get changed to high efficiency uh, furnaces uh, that will be gas fed. So there'll be, uh, there'll be furnaces down there. Uh, there'll be water heater down there. There's a sump down there. I believe most of those items are shown on the plans. Um, I know there was uh, there were some comments about the condensers. Um, most of most of the condensers we're installing nowadays are are very high efficiency. Um, they have a very low decibel rating. Um, most of the time, it, the, the noise is not so much an issue. Again, the, the client takes pride in what he does and, and is looking to showcase some of these uh, items. Uh, so you know he. What he's going to put in his building is representative of what he's he's uh, does as as a contractor. Um, so all the equipment will be high end equipment. Um, again, and the better the equipment is, the lower those decibels are. Um, the thought was by putting it in that alcove was that it's also protected from the elements. Um, you know, condensers, you know, ha have to release heat as as they as they work. If those condensers are provided with a little bit of shade, there's more efficiency for those condensers. So in turn, they actually have to run less. They're also protected from the elements. So all your line sets and panel boxes and everything else are also just have another layer of protection because they're covered from above. And we put some screening um, on two of those corners. Again, just, just to hide it, um, you know, and kind of close, you know, not close in that corner, but just to give it a little bit of some screening. Those condensers still have to breathe and if you, if the screening is too thick, well, okay, we might be able to reduce the sound transmission, but now we cause problems with airflow with the condenser. So it is a delicate balance, but of course, we have to comply, comply with the decibel ratings at the property line. And, and of course, there would be, um, you know, uh, insulation in that floor system, um, that the bedroom that would be directly over that. I highly doubt there's going to be an issue most time people's condensers are literally outside their bedroom window um this is up on the second floor i, I don't think they're going to hear those condensers i understand I, I, my experience has been that when we documentation from the manufacturing is very limited it's usually at three or four feet you can't get that documentation out 10 or 15 feet so saying it, it sounds like an easy task to do, but in reality, getting the cumulative effect of the property line, it might be 12 feet or 8 feet, it might be harder than you think. Um, it, it might have to be field tested. I mean, right, what I'm saying is I, it sounds easy, but I've ran into a couple of situations where that data could not be gathered, and the sound acoustic guy had to write a letter on this issue on the sound. Yeah, I, I would just say that we would comply with right. the sound board also. And the HVAC per unit, are they going to be magic pads? Are you saying that they're all forced here from the basement going all the way up for each unit? How, how is that working? Wow, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Were we so, doing magic packs? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, typically, so, I mean, we always try to get some kind of ducted system through because it's, it's more efficient. But um, what you're seeing, yeah, that now, nowadays in a lot of these um, multiple, multiple story, multiple unit buildings, yeah, you're doing some kind of, uh, you know, heat pump system or split system where you just have a wall pack. A lot of them are condensed. They're cassette heads that actually go in the ceiling now if you have room. And all those different rooms have all different controls. Obviously, they're always in heating or cooling mode, but it gives it gives different rooms the option to heat accordingly. So, but um, so most likely it would be that. Of course, on the on the office space, um, most likely it was going to have all ducts underneath right. running in the basement. So that was my question. Are you showing the, the movers and vents associated with that, those split units for uh, heating? Well, look, there's, there's, so 
the, the split systems, there are no louvers. That's that's a wall mounted. Right, item. with a compressor outside. Correct. Right, but the heating. Are you are you saying these are all heat pumps? So you're going to do well, electric heat? We do. No, we have we have furnaces in the basement. I believe we already showed. We have direct vent uh, pipes already shown on the plants. So you're going to say that the furnaces in the basement are supplying the heat for the third floor apartments. No, no, it's probably going to be mini splits for the apartments, and it'll be a ducted furnace for the office. Right, the mini splits are going to be in the wall somewhere in the apartment. Yeah, well, you can put them wherever. Wherever, and you're going to have direct vents out the sides. Is that the vents shown on the eastern facade? Is those, those, that, those that's correct. The yeah, no, 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 no. The, the mini split unit is just a line set. Right, from the, the compressor, but the heat system I'm talking about. The eight, we know you have four eight compressors, one per unit and one for the downstairs, the, the offices, right? Those are the four, five compressors? Yeah. Okay, so that's covered. The heating system is what I'm, I'm, I'm not clear at all. The heating per apartment, how are you heating the units? The mini splits are dual, they do heating and cooling. So it's what you're doing, geo, you're doing a, a electric heat. Pretty, pretty much, electric heat. You're not, doing, you're not doing natural gas or something with an exhaust. You're Co saying, correct. There is you're, no saying that you're basically doing a heat pump. Yes. Using the split system. Yes. Electric heat pump. Well, that explains it then. <laughs> I wish you just said that. <laughs> so you have five individual <laughs> units. Yes. In the building. Oh, right. Correct. Okay. What's the ceiling? Well, there's five. Well, it's, it's more than that because so each condenser actually has multiple heads that are allowed to be plugged in. Right. So the, three, the two bedroom apartment may have three heads so you usually you would have a, a head you know and it could be a uh, you know wall mounted unit it, it, it would be in each bedroom and then maybe out in the living room in the main space and all those are controlled individually and then you just have the line set which is your your thermostat controls and your condenser lines and that would go down to a single condenser so typically uh, one condenser can go up to five zones we try to keep it at three or four because again, the more zones you have, we start to lose that, you know, efficiency. Um, so there might be three, there might be three heads in a two-bedroom apartment. And there might be two heads in a one-bedroom apartment. Yeah. Right. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So, but they all use each. Each apartment will have one condenser. So, right. um, so the, the five condensers are one for each apartment, which is four, and the fifth one is for the office. The offices. Right. Yes. So when it gets super cold, we're going to have the toaster oven kick in. Right? When, when the heat pump doesn't work. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there. That's the I problem it, with the heat pump. It, it is. There, there are, sometimes you have to get into supplemental heating. The resistant um, heater comes on and then yes. it spins off of, of the chart. Yes. And and the, the units, they're a lot better now. Um, you know, the, the match packs were, were kind of the forefront of some of that. Um, but it's, it's where a lot of the technology is going. Um, there's, there's actually a lot, there's states now that are banning uh, the hookup of natural gas to new structures. So they're forcing uh, new buildings to be electric. So in, in nature, a lot of those electric items are, are, are having to be designed more efficiently anyway. How many hot water heaters do you have? Um, kind of five. I would say, yeah, I think we had them. I think we have one in each unit and then one down in the basement. Right. Right. And then what's the ceiling height on the second floor apartment and the third floor apartment? Um, I'd have to look at the plans, it's usually around eight feet. So there, we're, we're um, I believe it's going to be whatever the existing height is because we're working with that existing second floor. Nine feet, um, second floor, nine, nine feet, feet, third floor. Not nine, and what was the other one? Nine and eight. Nine and eight. Nine and eight. Okay. Right. And any washer and dryers in the building? Yes, there's a washer and dryer uh, in each apartment. Okay. Uh, we kind of set up like a little utility room um, that has some equipment in there. I think we might have shown, I think that's what we, we have a supplemental, I think, here in there. In, if you look at our plans, I think we have room for it. Um, we showed a supplemental furnace, uh, a, a water heater, and a washer and dryer. All in the utility room. And again, all of those ducts, we, we were conscious of any of the direct vents and the louvers and any kind of exhaust. We did try to keep that you know, off the front facing facade. Um, I believe most of them are shown on the east side. Any uh, consideration for cathedral ceilings in the third floor? Um, 
Possibly, I'm not sure the client would be opposed to something like that. I know there there are some limitations though because um, the the energy codes uh, have have really changed over the past code iterations, um, and the, the energy codes have really been driving a lot of the changes. And the the requirements that are needed in a ceiling now uh, typically are uh, around R49, which requires about 14 inches of insulation. So if you don't have an attic space. To, to, to put that insulation, you're forced to do a really thick rafter, or you have to go to like a closed cell spray foam. Right. Um, it's, you know, these options get very expensive. Um, there are some exemptions in the code that allow you to go to a, a cathedral ceiling up to 500 square feet. The footprint of the third floor is roughly under 2,000. So if we did a cathedral ceiling, maybe in two of the rooms, we could stay under that 500 square foot threshold which then allows you to go to an R30, which we can fit in a two by 10. So there are some, we, we, we can get creative with some of it when need be. So. What's the material on those little balconies? It's not clear from the index or the legend that you have, uh, the actual wall around those three foot, foot wide balconies. Uh, it, it would be, I, it's cable, cable rails. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's open, open cable rails. Well, same thing as the ramp, the accessible ramp, correct? Yes. I had the same question, Dan. I, could, I thought it was solid, solid surface. No, no. Oh, oh. Okay. And um, looking at page nine of the proposed report, uh, dumpster enclosure finish. Just what, what is the uh, finish of the dumpster enclosure? Uh, I did not, uh, but, but I'm assuming that. You know, obviously, there you have structure that's going to be on this site, so we want it to match. So, uh, colors and materials uh, certainly we would we would match that, so it looks all clear. Yeah, right. Spring now it's masonry with a brick finish, which mm -hmm. is standard for Somerville. I understand. Well, whoever did that, I understand. <laughs> okay. Well. Ideally, it'd be I understand, but what I'm yeah. saying is usually it'd be nice if you just said to finish. The dumpster enclosure with the same as the side. It, it would. It, we, we, there's no brick. We would we would match it with the stone veneer that we're showing in the, in the sample. What's the planning board recommending life for um, dumpster enclosures? I know several years ago they were doing board on board. Uh, for the the durability, we do the masonry with the culvert space inside, uh, so it doesn't get banged up because they just fly. You know, they get banged up. And I think Craig's detail is, with the, is consistent with what the planning board is using. Uh, it's just to finish. He shows a brick veneer, which is standard because a lot of some of those brick. On this application, you have this uh, party guy, you know, cement board. That yes. I think it's appropriate to match the, the facade thing to get the look. That's my opinion. Well, he didn't say cement board. He said he's using the stone. So. Yeah. The stone. Okay, the veneer, but there's on the upper one's the hardy line, right? Yeah, we're talking about stones, aren't we? Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, we're using stone, right? Yeah, we're using yeah. the stone for the exterior. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're using the stone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Cool. <clears throat> so I, I have nothing uh, further for Mr. Pinyano. Same one as the board. Oh yeah, let's we'll talk about the signage actually, if you can. Um, so there was a there was a couple comments on the sign. Um, of, of course, we would make sure that the sign is secured uh, properly. Um, uh, you know, any, any kind of thickness of metal, the, the the spacing of all the all the screws, all of that would have to comply with code. Um, there were some notes about uh, you know complying with at least thirty pounds per square foot. I don't see that as being an issue. It's going to be a, uh, a a flush sign that's mounted uh, directly to the wall. Um, it's very thin in nature. So I, I don't see it being a problem. Uh, that, that sign will be very secure. And, uh, and, and yes, it is. it was a circle um, that was, I believe, a four foot diameter circle is what we showed. Mm -hmm. um, and it, but I believe the ordinance requires you to make a, a, a square around, right. you know, a small square that can fit around that sign, which would be four by four, which would be 16 square feet. That's for the ordinance. Okay. Anybody have any questions? What's the uh, use of the building right now? The UCC size of a B, a L4 is a B use? It is a B, yes, because I believe it was the the dentist mm -hmm. office. 
Does the um, basement have a water system in it? I'd have to I'd have to look. I mean, the, the client saying that there was a fire alarm. Um, I know this on your new screen has an R five. I don't think this is R five, right? No, it would be. Uh, no, we're gonna be R two slash B. Yeah, it, we had this comment came up that to make sure the egress came up on the third floor. And whether the building has to be sprinkled, that only have one egress to the third floor apartments. And then we have the windowless basement, is what Ed's getting at. So I think it all has to be addressed. And my concern to the applicant was that there's no surprises. If you need a second staircase, it doesn't fit. And we're back to the board because the footprint doesn't work. So I think the applicant is saying that they can comply with the sprinkle with one. Uh, egress to the that, third floor. That, that is correct. So, so a sprinkler system would would be needed. Um, the the threshold on a single access is uh, four units. Um, no more than I think you could go to four, but I, I think it's three three floors. I know we're at three, so I know three complies. And I think there's a certain travel distance as well, which we also we also comply with. So. Um, yes, yeah, so all, all of that does comply. To, that's in Chapter 10 of the, uh, the IBC. Um, so that allows you to do the single access, single exit. And then you're going to have to do the alarm on the sprinkler system for the basement, for the yes, windowless it's, basement? It's an IBC. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and the, the windowless basement, uh, that's it's a very complicated subject. It's changed numerous times, um, especially with regards to existing buildings. Um, the, the building is less than 75 feet as well. Um, so there, you get into the, how this, the, the whole stream, how far, uh, you know, it's, a fireman has windows, to. Windows basically goes like this. It's required sprinkler system. There's a deduction if it's a certain square footage to the alarm system. But you're going to an RU screen, which requires a sprinkler system. Anyway, yes. it's a it, it, it is, yes. <laughs> I had a comment on the, uh, the hip roof, the main entrance, putting a, a roof leader around it so we don't have the icing. I don't know if anybody's at the crate. Is that your testimony? We're going to catch we're gonna the leaders in the gutters. So we're going to catch it. We're going we're gonna to address that. Is that what you're saying, Craig? Yep. Craig, <laughs> you put those leaders in? <laughs> <laughs> pointed out early in your testimony about, uh, you know, you know I, are there any environmental issues on the property that are being, that are under the jurisdiction of the DEP or? Okay, I just want to I want to get that on the record. Well, I, I testified before that I checked the GEO web, which is a, a DEP website. Right. And there were no indicators right. of any, any of those items, so no. Okay, I just want to follow up on that a little bit. All right, very good, appreciate it. Uh, building accent lighting. Is anybody going to? Is there any accent lighting? I had some comments about lighting over the entrances and a comment about accent lighting. I think Craig had responded in a couple of saying no accent lighting. Craig, is that none that I noticed? But I'll leave that. To yeah, I, it's I do sound the plan. So yeah, I mean we we would have. Um, I don't know. if I think we had some wall sconces shown on. The renderings so typically we have wall sconces especially along where that ramp is um, just to kind of light the, the entrance to the building um that that would that's typically all we were we were showing on this and the sign's not lit did you want to turn over there can turn over there no we're just going to do a light around the entrance and sort show us your landscape lighting the response from craig said that the, 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 the sign would not be illuminated. I had a comment on the first report, the response back, it's not going to be illuminated. I don't think the, the board's just trying to flush it out. Yeah. No illumination. I mean, it's not necessary, no. Not even a ground light. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> no, 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 no illumination. All right. Okay, and uh, you're going to have like a residential style, like high hatch or something under that hip roof for illumination of the entrance door. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 So the res you can have residential style lighting Correct. for the entrances. Yes. And the wall pack is going to be what Craig shows on his drawings for the, is the recessed LED that's used for part of the illumination of the parking lot, plus it's going to catch the ramp. Right? Right. Yes. 
Is there an intercom system? I was not quite on it. So the door will be open. For, for security measures, have we flushed out anything yet as far as security measures for the residential? For the buildings? residential, yes. yeah, the door's going to be open. The door's going to be open? Correct. And if there will be nothing locked for it. But Say that again? I said there will be locked for it, but they have to have a code to get in. But. Okay. So, so the, the door will be secure. They will need to have a, a code in order to access the residential uh, area. <laughs> You know, and since I, I, I understand the circumstances, uh -huh. I'd like you to, since you're giving answers, answers to testimony, sir, I'd like you to yep. <laughs> Sorry. You know, no, I got to do it. Yep. Um, please raise your right hand. You saw we heard the testimony you were about to give in this matter, and the testimony you have given up to this time in this matter will be truth, so I hope you got it. Yes, I did. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Dominic Vicario, last name P is in here, E R C A R I O. Okay, and you're and and you are the uh, owner and operator for Joe Perry Joe Cotter. Okay, no, I want to make sure that's uh, that's done. Okay, go ahead. So, so I'm yeah, make sure that's done for the record. Thank you. So. Uh, Mr. Geyer, I'm sure you heard the uh, board expressing concerns about security and just wanted some information as to what you envision for, for security for these residential units. Uh, so for security for residential units, I was just planning on having some sort of like key code that they had to use to enter into the residential units individually. That's all. Mm -hmm. the outer door and inner door? Uh, outer door would be, for, for instance, for office hours when people are coming into the main general area. The door has to be open there, so it's mostly for the inner doors. Um, but when we lock up at the end of the night, at, when the office is closed, they do have to have the ability to get inside. So I did plan it after hours for the outer door as well. Mailboxes? And the mailboxes, I believe, are actually depicted on the inside area, so in inside of the outer door. Good. Any other questions from the board? No. Any questions from the audience? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Kyle. It's a pleasure to see you, sir. Would you please raise your right hand? If you saw me swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter, will be the truth, so I'll be God. I do. Okay. Uh, please state your name, spell your last name for the record, and then I have one thing to mention to the board. Sure. So, uh, first name is James, last name Kyle, K Y L E, with Kyle McManus Associates in Hopewell, New Jersey. Uh, just for the purposes of full disclosure, Mr. Kyle is the planner in the uh, township of Wahakon, where I am, at least as of now, temporarily <laughs> the, uh, the land use board attorney, while the regular board attorney is embroiled in some other matters. So I see I see him every month, just so you know. That Ms. will Ms. not affect my thing. Did yes. Ms. McManus appear before the council? Yes, yeah, she was here before the council. Mr. Kyle, I look forward to your concise Yes, sir. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Eight thirty stands for time. Eight thirty. So I'll quickly. Uh, I have testified before this board. It's probably been a couple of years. Uh, my license is still current. Um, if you'd like to hear more, I'm happy to tell you. But, uh, that's all right. Uh, see, we cut that down right there. <laughs> so I was retained by the applicant to review the planning issues <coughs> of this application. I reviewed all the application materials uh, for our master plan ordinance. I visited the site and reviewed Mr. Cole's memo. Um, I'm just going to jump right in and summarize the relief. Uh, I think Mr. Styers covered all the bulk relief. In some cases, this bulk relief, these are existing conditions, uh, particularly for, uh, let's see, parking location, um, setback of the curb to the property lines. Th these are mostly existing conditions that we're just maintaining. We're not really moving any of the site improvements per se. As Craig said, we're actually reducing impervious coverage. There's some areas of asphalt that are being removed, so we're taking about 6% of that out. 
The front yard condition is exacerbated only by the balconies that we're putting on. So the footprint of the building remains the same. It's just that overhang of the balcony that increases or rather decreases that front yard setback. The two main variances that are required with this application are D1. So the POR district that we are located in, uh, it's actually interesting in the ordinance. So it is used in a singular fashion in the schedule, but as you go through the ordinance, there are multiple references in the plural to apartments and their standards, things like that. The interpretation is that one apartment is permitted above the ground floor of this facility and we're proposing four. So that's the D1 variance that we're seeking. In addition to that, there's a D4 variance for an increase in the permitted FAR. 25% is permitted and we're proposing 41.13. So what I'll do is let me run through the, the, some quick testimony on the use variances first. Uh, for the D1 variance, <clears throat> Uh, we're required to demonstrate both the positive and negative criteria. On the negative, we're required to show what's called an enhanced quality of proof under the court's decision in the DGVDPR. That's that the grant of variance is not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the zone plan, essentially reconciling why this use is not among the ones permitted in the POR district. So for the positive, I think the public welfare is promoted here because the site is particularly suited to use. First and foremost, we have a district where there was an anticipation of an apartment above the ground floor. That, that's what the ordinance contemplated. Um, we also have a site that can accommodate this use. We can provide all the required parking on site. So all 18 required spaces can be provided. And we're doing that in a fashion that actually improves some of these conditions on site, particularly impervious coverage, which will be a benefit. Um, we also have locations in close proximity to Main Street in the Central Business District. So if you've read through Mr. Cole's 2019 master plan, uh, there's a specific reference in there on the POR district uh, and really putting additional residences in close proximity to that central business district to help support the businesses that we have. And that's a, a pretty common theme that we've seen a lot of uh, suburban municipalities with Main Street. We want to have people after business hours that are going to come, walk down, go to restaurants, spend money in the shops, things like that. So um, that location in close proximity to Main Street is also advantageous for a project such as this and for the inclusion of additional apartments beyond the one permitted. In terms of purposes of the municipal land use law to promote purpose A, to promote the general welfare, again, reading through the master plan, um, it's, there's a policy recommendation for the POR district that is to encourage, where possible, adaptive reuse of existing housing stock so that buildings can be used for multiple uses so that they are fully utilized. There's also policies on housing, uh, locate housing in selected locations within and around the central business district to stimulate business and retail activity. I'm oh, sorry, I got to slow down. No, okay. Thank you. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, that was to the end. <laughs> stimulate retail activity beyond traditional work hours and increase the opportunities for households to obtain satisfactory housing at a variety of prices. So what this proposal does, um, you know, we have some modest size apartments that meet all the size requirements that were specified in the redevelopment plan and the ordinance um, that are within walking distance. So if somebody lives in town, they can walk to and from work, you know, really kind of helping reduce auto dependence, uh, things like that. And that's really a lot of the themes of the master plan. Also G to provide sufficient space in appropriate locations. I think given the proximity to Main Street, uh, and really, if you look at the projects around us, we have a, a fairly large apartment building that, that went up just on Davenport, immediately adjacent to us. So context-wise, this is the right location for this to occur. And also M, which talks about the efficient use of land. Uh, allowing the additional apartments here allows us to make use of essentially improvements that already exist on the site. So as I said, we can park this facility fully on-site, don't need to rely on any off-site parking, and it can really support the additional apartments that we're seeking. In terms of any impact to surrounding properties from this, um, the site has had a level of activity associated with it. Granted, it's been vacant for quite some time, but it was quite a busy medical office. Um, that's not going to change dramatically. Yes, we'll have a little more nighttime activity with residents coming and going, but it's a limited number of apartments. Most of the parking is located on the west side of the building, the south side, so it's well away from the residential unit that we have directly to our east. Um, while the structure that's proposed is a little bit larger than, than what is there today, it generally fits with the character of the buildings. As I said, we have that pretty large multifamily building on Davenport and a variety of, of sizes of structures that we see. The middle school's right across the street. 
So context-wise uh, and design-wise, this fits in with the area. Um, overall, I think the increase in the number of apartments here is not going to have substantial impact. You know, we're talking about three additional apartments. And generally speaking, what we have in the area, we have the municipal parking lot, we have the middle school, and then the central business district right behind us. So I don't think the level of activity that's going to result here will, will be anything that's going to substantially impact adjacent properties. In terms of the intent and purpose of the zone plan and the Medici proof, uh, there is no purpose statement in the ordinance for the POR district, uh, but it does provide for mixed use, as I said. It does permit that one apartment, and that's reinforced by the statement that was in the 2019 master plan. Uh, the, there are purposes of the ordinance, that's in section 1022. They generally mirror the purposes of municipal land use law, uh, but importantly includes another purpose statement that is to encourage diverse types of housing construction. Which I think is met. Um, again, locate housing in close proximity to the central business district and increase opportunities for a variety of, of housing types for residents of the, of the borough. So I think overall the grant of the variance here promotes those objectives of the master plan uh, and it's particularly relevant given how close we are to the central business district here. Now addressing the Medici proof, um, <clears throat> again we have to demonstrate that it's not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the zone plan. I think when you read a lot of these purpose statements and the policies and objectives in the master plan, this proposal is squarely in line with them. So I don't think it's inconsistent. And the analysis here is a little bit different on this just simply because an apartment is permitted. It's just really the number of apartments that we're seeking relief from. So this was in some way contemplated within the ordinance and the master plan. Um, and it's really, you know, does this have any additional impact? And what was the real intent behind limiting it to a single apartment? Again, when you look at this location, you, we can kind of reconcile it based on the fact that we're so close to the central business district. We're on a corner, and we have other larger multifamily buildings that are in close proximity. So context-wise, it works, and I think that's probably the easiest way that, that this can be reconciled is, is solely based on the location. Now, addressing the D4 variance uh, for FAR, <clears throat> the analysis here is a little bit different. Um, the, the, Court in a case called Randolph Town Center, the township of Randolph, said that the board should employ what are called the Coventry standards here, rather than the strict Medici enhanced proof. Really what we have to demonstrate is that the site can accommodate the problems associated with an increase in FAR, and then does that increase have any substantial impact on surrounding properties, and can we reconcile the relief with the governing body's intent behind that 25% limitation being put there in the first place. So I think the positive criteria on this variance is pretty much identical to those for the D1, uh, purposes A, G, and M. I think the site remains suitable for this use despite the increase in the FAR. Uh, you know, typically an increase in FAR might come with problems like increased traffic, increased parking demand, uh, things of that nature. So I think it's important to show that we can accommodate all the required parking on, on the site and that we're actually reducing impervious coverage versus what's there today. So we're actually, you know, when you look at those intensity measures that we typically look at, um, we're not overdeveloping the site per se to increase this FAR. So and I think that's important. Um, in terms of the negative criteria, what effect the increase in FAR might have on surrounding properties. Again, the site's had a level of activity associated with it. We don't expect that that's gonna change much uh, with the increase in, in FAR. The structure's larger, but it generally fits, again, with the character of the area. All the activity is going to be on the west side of the building, the south, well away from the single-family home that we have immediately to our east. So I think overall, again, three additional apartments is not going to increase the level of activity significantly to the point that it's going to negatively impact surrounding properties. And I think here, again, on reconciliation of that FAR, good location next to the central business district, kind of squaring with a lot of the policies that are in the master plan um, is really the easiest way to, to reconcile that. And again, the, the site's not substantially changing and, and you know, in our opinion, is gonna be a significant improvement uh, over what was there previously. Now, in terms of the bulk relief, um, <clears throat> again, as I said, many of these are relative to existing conditions that are, that are not changing. Um, I did want to talk about the front yard setback variance because we are exacerbating that slightly. So this is not a wholesale, you know, moving the building three feet closer to the front line. This is strictly the balconies that we have on the front of the building. Uh, 
we expect that they'll be used infrequently. Um, you know, it's not somebody's not going to set a grill up out there and you know be sitting on a lawn chair. It's it's not of a size that's really useful other than for maybe standing out there for a cup of coffee or, or for you know to watch the bikes go by. Um, so it doesn't have a substantial amount of mass that we're increasing in that front yard setback. You know, these railings, as uh, Joe said, are, are cable systems, so they're essentially not a solid structure that's presenting a lot of mass that's increasing that. So I think the positive benefit here is one of uh, purpose I to promote a desirable visual environment. We think this improves the function and the appearance of the building um, significantly. And it also gives someone just the option to be able to step outside of their unit without having to come all the way down uh, out to the parking lot. Any potential negative impacts, again, the, you can see from the rendering here that's up A5, doesn't present a substantial mass. Um, we're essentially in line with the setback that you see while the front yard setback required is 25. None of these buildings along West High Street are, are at that. They're pretty much all right up to the street until you get a little farther to the east. So I don't believe there'll be any substantial impact to adjacent properties from this. And then in terms of the intent, Again, the master plan doesn't speak specifically about why you know we require a specific front yard, but it's related to the general purpose of the MLUL to provide adequate light air and open space. I think given the fact that these balconies are largely open and don't represent a lot of mass there, that that intent will not be substantially impaired. Uh, the building height, <clears throat> again, we're increasing this slightly. Um, two and a half stories and 35 is what's permitted. The building is three stories and read that 36.83 now, so we're increasing that slightly. Uh, this The benefit here is really just to provide that additional living space. So we have the initial iteration of this um, plan, the, the apartments were somewhat smaller. So this just provides adequate living space to the, to the general welfare benefit um, in this case. Any negative impact, again, the building's slightly increasing in size. Um, the mass is not going to be substantially different, nor the appearance. So. Um, it, it's really going to remain, the impact is essentially what it is more or less today. So it shouldn't represent any substantial impact there. And obviously the intent of height standards <coughs> is to just govern uh, the appearance of buildings, making sure that we're providing uh, adequate light air and open space. And again, this is a, a pretty nominal increase in the size over what's there today. So we don't expect that would have any substantial impairment to the intent of those standards. Again, I think that the rest of these are really um, representative of existing conditions that we're maintaining. Um, I don't expect that allowing any of those to remain is going to have any substantial impact. The site's been developed this way for quite some time. Um, so I don't suspect that any of these other variances, again, existing conditions that we're maintaining are going to have any substantial impact. The signage um, is probably the last one that I just want to address separately. Um, the sign is on the front of the building facing West High Street. We do have a business that's going to be located here. There are going to be clients that are going to be coming for consultation um, with, with our applicant. So we need to obviously identify the site adequately. We have no other signage that's located here. So we want to make sure that it's of a size that if somebody's coming, they can at least identify the building and get in. The other thing is, you know, the oddity, and it's very common that sign standards are measured as a box around, but this is a circular sign of, of four feet in diameter, so it's not truly 16 square feet. And the, the standard is that it can't be more than two feet on one side. So that's really the relief that we're seeking. So I think the public welfare benefit here is obviously to guide people that are coming to the site to help identify the building, make sure they get to the right place. The sign is in the location, uh, as we've talked about, it's not gonna be eliminated. Um, so there's no real impact from glare or, or anything like that. It fits in well with the design of the building on the front. You can see it here on A5, the rendering. Um, and I don't think the intent of the sign standards limiting that will be substantially impaired. Again, just based on, you know, we can see pretty clearly what the visual on the sign will be. And um, I don't think it will substantially impair the intent of that limitation. It's a very understated sign and, and will fit nicely with the design of the building. Mr. Chairman, that's all I had in the way of direct uh, request for conciseness. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it wasn't. I'm sorry. That's right. Anybody from the board have any questions on the um, testimony just given? No. No way from the audience. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The, um, the board doesn't have anything uh, further. Any other questions? Uh, that, that
draft that pretty much concludes our, our testimony for this evening. Um, sure, I do have one question the owner. Sorry, I thought about that as he was speaking. <laughs> Sorry. Um, obviously you have a construction company. Do you have a yard somewhere else where you keep construction equipment and trucks and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so it's going to be stored here. So actually we have an entire uh, mother yard home center area in Roselle. All our okay. trucks and equipment stay there. Thank you. Yep. So, I'd like to move to close the public portion of the so second. Moved. I'll I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, let's go. Lord, what's your pleasure? What are the. And Cliff, what do you have? Yeah. We don't have that many conditions on the record, quite frankly. Um, I'm not. I'm not aware of any actually, uh, other than our standard conditions. I want to make sure that if there was any involvement of the DEP that that was taken care of. There isn't. So, uh, I mean, if the, if the board uh, if the board has conditions it would like to, uh, reasonable conditions it would like to impose in terms of you know, controlling the non conforming use or controlling the FAR. It certainly is a liberty to do so. We really don't have any other. Uh, well, we have the compliance with usually my report with the exceptions. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. The leveling of the sidewalk. I think the testimony was that the whole slab would have to be jacked or removed. So later, later drains underground. But, we are, but that's in the report that <laughs> do that. Well, I'm talking about the exceptions to the report. Might oh, we'll revisit the granite, uh, yeah, because that's an interesting topic. You were talking about the cost is almost the same now as now it's cheaper. It's less expensive than, yeah. than concrete. Yeah, if you use the county unit prices for public prevailing uh, wage rates, granite is cheaper per linear foot to install. And in your opinion, from an aesthetic standpoint, that would make it look a lot nicer. It's a nicer look. I mean, the applicant's proposing the concrete because he's got concrete curb there. He's not replacing it all. Obviously, if you're replacing it all, I would have said in the report, you should use granite because it's, a nice, in my opinion, a nicer look. It's a more modern one. Uh, we have a very modern building that's going in. Right, we did indicate there's a stipulation as a compliance with the uh, renderings uh, in terms of the appearance of the building. We would have compliance with Michael's report, uh, except as indicated in the record, that's a that's something I always put in. Uh, I don't believe we have been, I'm just looking here. Um, testimony was the, air, the, air, the AC units are not gonna be a problem for the bedroom. Right. And they will comply with the state noise code. Right. Well, they have to comply also with our order. Right. Um, nope, I, I, that, is, that is pretty much the extent of it. Okay. I mean, we did not, I, I must say, I think the applicant presented a uh, very thorough, very thorough plan, uh, which would, which would, you know, which doesn't need a lot of, which doesn't need a lot of corrective conditions in it. And so, I mean, it's not unusual. Obviously, we have our normal conditions of approval, which means, which means that you comply with, you know, comply with the, comply with the engineer and the planner. And with our, you know, to the extent necessary, we'll comply with our fire, our fire uh, marshal. And uh, if, uh, you know, all taxes will be paid, all, all other approvals that you must obtain, I keep going back to, you know, DEP's only one county or state uh, approvals must be obtained, but uh, must be obtained, pardon me, but uh, beyond that, I mean, I think, as I said, the board is going to need you to impose those conditions to see if it's not right. Yeah, and just, uh, say something that. Now, I'm uh, just looking at this notice. Yeah. Not, don't discuss your dinner plan, vacation plan, or anything else. <laughs> my, my comment was I, I think it's a better application than the initial one. I think this, we had some issues with noticing. I met with the applicant because we had an issue whether the, the third floor was a two and a half stories or a third. Mm -hmm. And I spent a few hours with the applicant, and uh, I think the product would be a better product on ground too. And the, the sign was on the second floor originally, now it's on the ground floor, which is, a, I think, a much better fit. So I just think it's a better application. I'm uh, just 
like to say, first of all, I, I agree to the conditions that Mr. Gibbons stated, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Cole uh, for, for helping us through this to come up with what I think is a better product at the end. I agree, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think what Mr. Cole did and what you did working with him was very helpful because I know he had some problems. Uh, we had some problems last month, so right. you know, I think we've come a long way since then. And I would, I would just ask. Um, if before uh, we go into the matter, if, the, if any board members have any concerns that, that we haven't already spoken about. Um, Let's just get really good to that. Okay. Great. So we did decide that the granite's in. Yeah. No. I haven't heard from the no, applicant on that. Because I said I'm in. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, you know, we, as you know, we have you know other applications where we're in. Uh, you know, damn your litigation on conditions. I mean, if, if there are if there are concerns that the board wants to voice, this is a good time to do it. This, only time. this is the only time left to do it. Yeah. All right. So, granted, Ted, um, I, I just personally, uh, I, I like the ceiling height for the apartments on the eight and nine feet. It really expands it. I think the tenants are going to love that. If you do this building the way that is presented here, just like you did West Cliff Street. This is a home run for our town in Somerville because okay. it is the gateway, one of the gateways that brings everybody on to Main Street. It really is, is outstanding. And uh, again, the, the parking is adequate, so yeah. I'm fully supportive of the plan. Mm -hmm. I think to the agree with Morgan completely, I think it's an area that needs uh, a facelift. And I think it's just like the use of the uh, space there, um, particularly in light of the other apartment building right nearby fits in with the characters of the neighborhood and goes right downtown. I think it's uh, I think it's good. So I think it's a, a win for everybody. Awesome. Yeah. Were we deliberating? We closed the portion. No, we didn't. <laughs> 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 the okay. okay. Yeah, because I thought we Someone would like to move the closed public portion of this application? Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Nothing negative, everything positive. I like it. I, um, I've seen this building um, when it was Catholic Church and it burned down in 64. And I walk past it every week going, going to my church, which is down the street. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good addition. And I'm glad that you're restricting the parking just to your tenants and not uh, as they wanted to do last year and use your uh, lot for uh, overflow for the waste property. It's going to be really good. I do. I'm in favor of it. So it's been moved. So I'll get moved to approval. So moved. Moved. Second. Second. We're ready. So just so so for standard conditions of approval on the conditions set forth on the record, which have been discussed on the record, just discussed on the record. <laughs> yeah. Good. Roll call, please. Roll call. Chairman Adair. Yes. Sam Shevitz. Yes. Brian Vidinsky. Yes. Morgan McLaughlin? Yes. Ed Allen? Yes. Eric Alvarez? Yes. Gary. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Of resolution with your office. Okay. Sounds good. So the question I have, our next meeting is uh, December 7th. Do we have an agenda? I'll get one. You do? I'll you. make one. But, but we do have applications. We have three residential applications. Three. Okay. Three. So we are. And that's going to be it. Like her the rest of the year. So yeah, we have one meeting in December. We have a few yeah. yeah. applications. Yeah. And then obviously in January we'll make a decision. Typically we have a uh, reward. And if it's, sometimes it's a small application, we have reward in small. Sometimes the board is comfortable doing a large application. We have two rather large applications in here in January. Yes. Yes. Depending on, on how the board wants to proceed with the work. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I just realized as Morgan said that the number. The proposals uh, for the uh, professionals would be like the borough. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do everybody together so the, the governing body meets Monday. So then I'll just send out everybody's all at once after that. So I just don't know their their direction. But if not, I'll just send out there separately. But we have plenty of time. So. Right. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Move that we uh, go into executive session, and close the close the regular meeting, and go into executive session. So yeah. I want to move it. I move it. Second. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. It's got to shut on itself. Yeah. Uh, I I would like to say yes. Under the 